Hello. In this Java tutorial, we're going to learn about one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays. Let's start by thinking about what a variable is. A variable is like a container. It can hold different things, like an int, or a double, or even an object like a string. However, it can only hold one value at a time. Now we introduce arrays, which are like one container with separate compartments. This would be considered an array of size 3 because it's got one, two, three compartments. We identify each compartment with its index number. So this would be index 0, this would be index 1, this would be index 2. And each of these compartments can hold a different value. Let's think of a time when it would be more efficient to use an array. Let's say we wanted to write a program that kept track of how many runs each team scored in a baseball game. So for a standard length game of nine innings, we'd have nine variables for the home team and nine variables for the visitor. This could be doable, but this is a lot of variables to keep track of. On the other hand, if we used arrays, we could have one array for the home team with one index for each inning and one array for the visiting team with one index for each inning. It's a lot more efficient to program and to debug. Now let's move on to see how we can implement arrays in Java. Arrays can hold multiple different values of the same data type in one variable. Arrays are objects, but their indexes may hold primitive types or reference types. Arrays in Java and most languages start off at index 0. Let's look at the two ways we can create arrays. First, we can declare the variable type, add a set of square brackets, letting the compiler know that this variable will point to a one-dimensional array, and have the variable name. Next, we say that we are creating a new, whatever data type, and then the number of indexes inside square brackets. This could be done on two lines, where we declared the variable on one line and initialized it on the next. If we don't specify the values, in this case, they will default to 0 because it is an int. If it were a double array, they would default to 0.0. .0. If it were a Boolean array, they would default to false. And if it was any type of object array, the values would default to null. Another way to create an array is, again, variable data type, square brackets indicating a one-dimensional array, and variable name, and then set it equal to a hard-coded array. This array is size 4 because it has four elements, separated by commas, with curly brackets at the beginning and the end. Let's see how we can change the values inside an index. This command says we want to change index 2 of the array x is pointing at to 12. Index 0, 1, 2 is changed to 12. Let's look at another line of code. This is saying we want to change index 4 at whatever array y is pointing at to 21. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There is no index 4, so we're going to get an out-of-bounds exception, and the program will crash. If we want to access data inside the variable, we do it like any other variable, except not only do we specify the variable name, but we specify what index we want to access. This line of code will print out whatever value is in y index 1. In this case, that will be 5. Now let's look at two-dimensional arrays. A two-dimensional array is really an array of arrays. Here, we are creating a two-dimensional array. We again have the data type, but now we have two sets of square brackets, letting the compiler know that this will point at a two-dimensional array. A, and we say new int, and the number of rows, and the number of columns. This is the way we generally draw it out for tracing, but it's not necessarily the most accurate representation of what's really going on. Really, we have two sets of one-dimensional arrays. We have the outer array with three indexes, and then each of the inner arrays has four indexes. However, for tracing purposes, it's usually easier to use this visualization. Here's another way we can create a two-dimensional array. Again, we declare the variable and hard-code one-dimensional arrays into it. 
you can see we have our outer array. Then we have our two one-dimensional inner arrays. This would be an array with two rows, and each of the rows would have one, two, three columns. Some programmers prefer to write it like this, so it's easier to match up the first row and the second row when we are visualizing it. In a future lesson, we're going to learn how to use a for loop to traverse an array. That's where we go through and visit each element in the array. To continue on to the next lesson, please click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. To see the entire Java curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.